All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan, and uh, hopefully everyone had a very good weekend. I'm going to double check this because OBS, when I hit the record button, like it lagged like crazy, but everything looks like it's working pretty well. So today I thought we would do something actually different because um, now that I've taken some two, three days off from coding, uh, I was actually really sitting down to think, okay, there's something not right with what I'm doing. And long story short, <coughs> coronavirus, I bet. Uh, long story, sh I'm actually fine. Um, long story short, uh, one thing that, that I've always been all about my whole life intuitively uh, is I'm, I'm a guy that loves scale. Right? Everything I do is about scale, right? Why do something and then just get 10 bucks an hour when I can take that same idea and scale it up to like whatever I want? Right? That's why I'm always so attracted to business and investing, because business and investing is all about scale. Um, and, you know, I'm really at a crossroads in a way because it's like, OK, so I got right with God. Right. God's giving me mastery over money because now, you know, I finally get it. Right. So what am I going to do with my millions? Right. And then eventually deck of millions. And then, you know, if I keep doing what I'm doing, yeah, I can become a comfortable uh try millionaire is that even is that the word right for having hundreds of millions of dollars but what am i going to do then right if i really want to have some sort of impact on the world you know it probably would be easier to be a billionaire right because look at all the crap we have to deal with right who's screwing us in, in the ass ultimately it's people who are billionaires right now are they inherently malicious maybe but it's also because they actually honestly think we're bad people Right? And that may not be so far off from the truth either, because ultimately, you know, we're all sinners, right? You know, that's what it really means. And God's like, well, you know, all of you are kind of like problematic. But, you know, I'm pretty cool now. So, you know, you can still get to heaven, right? But <laughs> so it's like, how, how do you navigate all that? So anyway, uh, so I'm thinking if I keep coding, right, it's it's so not only is it so difficult but there's so much crap that i got to do on my own that's going to really take me away from everything else and on and obviously my priority is to always make sure hey i need to make sure i get my money from you know the next bull run right you know so you know so and then i'm also trying to figure out what do i actually really want to do right because i know i always wanted some kind of entertainment company right and i also want to be able to just you know buy a lot of investments so i like so like I have a lot of different things I can do, but the problem is I'm limited by one problem, right? Time, right? There's only one of me and there's only 24 hours in a day and I have to spend on average eight to nine hours of it sleeping. So, <clears throat> so what do I do? So I need to go backwards a bit. And I think one thing I might also consider doing is just create like a simple, simple, single player tower defense game and i can add more crap to it later all right because it's not even about making the money even even while i was making my current game based on my dream script it's not even about that it's like how do i best serve god and it's like you know i have to actually sit down and think about this right so um because yesterday i was watching soda pop and, and they actually recently started something called watch parties on twitch which because everything's owned by amazon so Soda Poppin was actually watching The Boys, the Amazon show, on stream. So I watched it with them. I was like, wow, this is brilliant. I wonder why Amazon didn't think of this earlier. It was actually pretty cool. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, you know, Amazon literally does everything. Right? And now they're invading the Hollywood space. Right? Obviously, I don't see Jeff Bezos making the decisions in any of this. He just says, here's a lot of money. Go do this. That's it. Right? Eventually, that's what I have to do anyway. So it's like, why should I, you know... But with that being said, you know, I'm doing some research now on Jeff Bezos, at least some of the backstory. And then I think I'm going to buy this particular, wait, what? Wait, where, where's the, oh, this is the Kindle version. This is, yeah, $9. So I'm, also I'm very likely going to buy this book because I keep seeing this thing pop up a lot. Because I don't need to know the stupid quotes or whatever. I mean, I'm sure Jeff Bezos means well when he says his quotes, but that's just quotes. It's just the shit that he, he's going to tell everybody, right? I want to know how what he actually was doing, right? Because he wasn't, because he didn't say anything about, oh, you know, learn computer programming so that you can start up and then see what I see, all right? Because at least when I teach Bitcoin, that's what I tell you. I tell you the actual dumb shit you have to do, right? I don't give you the platitudes. No, the platitudes are nice. They do make you feel good. Um, 
which technically is also not a good thing because you're not supposed to feel anything, right? According to Jesse Lee Peterson. But I think I think today we can indulge a little bit. Um, and I gotta go to Target today too because I had, I actually deliberately did not restock supplies for a while because you know, yeah, you know, I, I like literally overloaded and stuff. But I, I think I have I still at least have another one week's worth of supply of food, easily ish, right? But yeah, I'm just gonna restock anyway, so. Uh, so yeah, so today we're gonna actually focus on Jeff Bezos a bit, see if I can figure out what's going on. You know, I need to get back to my roots before, you know, I get too de deep, deep dive into this. Now, with that being said, I put a lot of effort, not so much money, but effort into coding, and it's still gonna be kind of important, because at minimum, I need to be able to talk to other programmers. I could probably get by by not doing much programming, if at all. Uh, but it would probably be helpful if I knew at least some of the basics, which I obviously now do. Uh, and on top of that, there's this uh, other Twitch streamer. He doesn't really stream that much, but he's called Ruckful. He doesn't know shit about programming, but he's got a lot of money from all his years of streaming and playing World of Warcraft tournaments, right, for Blizzard, right? He was a Blizz... Well, he, he, he... For Hearthstone. And he also used to do Arena, too. And uh, he doesn't do shit for programming. He just hired a bunch of computer programmers to make his game... Uh, Everland, I think? Uh, no... Everland Wreckful Game. I don't know why, yeah. I don't know why Google just will not return this result. Uh, yeah, so this is the game that he's making. It's like a simple 2D sprite game. However, it's, the sprites actually do look pretty nice, actually. So I'm assuming he hired an artist to do the custom graphics, because this does not look like, uh, whatchamacallit, nine months ago. Uh, we changed the art style again. We showed the game today on stream, peaking 30,000 concurrent. Oh, wow. So lots. Yeah. So even without much, right? Look, Wreckful doesn't know shit about coding or drawing or any of this stuff. He's already making this game because he hired other people to do it. So I have to do the same thing, right? Because again, it's about scale. I can only do so much in so little time before my time runs out and my sanity goes, all right? You know, because um, yeah, as fun as it was, for me to figure out how to deal with the health bars for like eight hours. I really sat there, I thought I spent eight hours to get a stupid simple health bar to work properly because I'm trying to do all this crazy fancy shit. And I thought, my God, this is why most smart people are not rich. <laughs> it's all like, okay, I, I, need to, I really need to step back from that. So, um, so you know what? I'll hire someone else to do that dumb shit for me, all right? And then I keep the rest of the money. All right. No, I mean to be fair, like chances are I'll probably be making the first programmers I hire act if I really like them and they like me. We'll pro I'll probably just make them partner and they just get equal share of the company and shit. Uh, but they have to be really, really good. Um, so anyway, so that that's what we're gonna go into. Because again, it's not just because I don't want to teach you just to make a bunch of money, right? Because money comes and goes. If you can scale your money, because that's the way I look at it, well, then you, you'll be like me. Just sit on your ass all day, play video games, do shit on the internet, and just live your life. And you just have money coming in like, you know, rain uh, during a thunderstorm. All right? There's just, too much, there's just too much out there, right? So if that's what you want, and of course that's what you want. That's why you're watching this channel, right? So, yeah. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna go about. We're gonna. So today is just gonna be on scale. Well, let's get through the basics. We're, I don't even give a shit about the coronavirus because it's not at this point. It's already been solved, right? It's just we just gotta wait out for the shutdown to be lifted. So we gotta get ready for what comes after the shutdown, which is like the biggest bull run in recent history, probably since at least the great two thousand eight uh, recession. And hopefully this will translate into Bitcoin hitting a million, two million dollars when all is set and done in the next couple of years. And that's what we want, right? Because again, it's about scale. Uh, so Bitcoin searches for last week has been finalized at 12. Cryptocurrency, um, I think I actually need to refresh it. So I literally just popped this open and then I didn't really get a chance to refresh this because I'm busy. Well, hey, I'm busy trying to relax. Uh, number two, uh, well, I guess we take a quick look at that. I don't really care about this. I mean, uh, we don't care about that. You know what? We could probably hit these X buttons. And then, of course, we'll get to the meat of this, which is basically scaling in Jeff Bezos. I specifically need to read about Jeff Bezos. Because if you notice, he became richer than Bill Gates and even Steve Jobs. And even bigger than Apple and Microsoft. And I, and I love the... Um, 
I forgot the name of the guy, but um, the internet documentary. God, I know the guy's face. What was the name of? Uh, what was the name of that guy? Uh, God, about the internet. I, I'm hoping this link lists the name of it because I know if I read the name of it. Uh, not catfish frontline. No, where's the 1996 one? Uh, life in a day. Look at all these stupid modern day whatevers. Uh, no. Oh my god. What was the name? Because I have it on my Amazon account too. At least I bought the Jeff, the Steve, the Steve Jobs thing. Um, what's the name of the, what's the, name of the guy? 90s miniseries. Mm. Richard something. God, none of these are the... Oh, my God. Let's see. Okay, you know what? I did an internet document. What I should be doing is PC Revolution documentary. That's the... Because that's what it was mostly about. Um, let me see. If we could just find the thing. Store Steam Power... Uh, no... I think this might be the name of it. Silicon Valley Revolution, a few nerds. Um, oh my God. I'm pretty sure some of you might be scared you actually know the one I'm, I'm thinking of. Uh, par not Pirates of Silicon Valley, oh my God. It was. It's such a. It's such a like famous one too. What the hell is the name? I. 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 Yeah. Why can't I remember it? Um. Let's see. I think that was his name. He also was one of the first employees for um, Apple too. Triumph of the Nerds. I. That's it. I think that's it. The Triumph of the Nerds. Unfortunately, I spent so much time. Yes. This. It's this one. Triumph of the Nerds. Uh. Yeah, so why why did I mention this? Oh yeah, so Jeff Bezos. Now I remember. So Jeff Bezos got rich way after this because this was about Bill Gates and Steve Jobs ultimately. All right, Jeff Bezos was still yeah Robert Cringely. That's it. Jeff Bezos. I mean, at that point in time, the late because this thing came out in 1996. Yeah, 1996. Right. So Jeff Bezos didn't even start Amazon until basically after this. In fact, maybe he saw this movie and was like, I'm going to become Bill Gates someday. Right? He's ahead of me by now by th tens of billions, but I can be better. Right? And he did 20 years later, 30 years later. So that's kind of like the situation I find myself in. So Because I loved this documentary. I was like, this is like the best. It was like, oh, man. But they already made it. Like, what am I going to do? Right? Um... But I do have, we do have an opportunity. It's called cryptocurrency, so that's why I'm taking it. Uh, so yeah, so that's what that's what's in store. All right, that is what is in store because you know, sure, I'm content with what I have now, and I'll be content with what I'll be given by God, essentially. But I mean, not too many people in this world are given the opportunity to become multi-billionaires and can change the course of history. So I might as well do it because, well, not me, then who? All right. Not too many others. Bitcoin does at 63.4%, 24 bombs at 131 billion. Uh, Bitcoin's at 7,066. Litecoin's at 42 bucks. Uh, pretty much the same as I said before, right? Nothing new. Um, it's not going to go up until the lockdown's lifted. Big dog coins at 250 million market cap. And Steam. Where's Steam in all of those? Steam is at 15.76 cents. I don't really care about high power uh, right now and don't really care to find out. Uh, stocks are doing their usual thing, up and down, you know, pretty neutral. I don't even care about these headlines. All I can think about is the future at this point. Uh, Remmel's at, yeah, so Remmel's doing fine. So nothing, not, nothing new. It's a, today's a nothing day. Very good. Uh, JMC's at 7 to 8. It looks like it's going to be 8 to 9 very soon. 404 is back up to 9 to 10. Uh, there's been a big, pretty big buying frenzy in crypto. Not that I'm complaining. 2x2 two two coin is going to be 66 to 68. 
And yeah, I was thinking about since that, you know, I'm gonna have to pause development of my dream game anyway, because you know, it, it's just uh, it this uh, it requires so much it requires so much more resources than I currently have. Uh, and even if I did create it, it's going to take me away from the main prize, which is making sure that I get rich off of this bull run. That's always the priority, all right? Get rich off the bull run, because then if I make, if I have five million dollars in the bank, well, what's five hundred grand to me when I want to just hire a bunch of programmers, even if it's temporary, to go build my game? That's going to be way more effective than me doing all this shit myself, all right? Um, so again, it's about scale. And as we're gonna soon read, because I only read some of this, because I, had, I was like, oh, you know, I got looked at the time, I gotta make my video. Um, you know, he did code Amazon originally, but he also hired other people. And from the way this thing reads, he did it from the start. All right. So even Jeff Bezos had employees right from the start. So that's the position I'm gonna be in. Um, only difference is. Uh, I have I will have more money than Jeff Bezos started out with, and I'll have better technology than Jeff Bezos did. So you know, if I play my cards right, I should be on the same trajectory as Amazon. All right, that's what I'm looking at. All right, because because I do have one gift that a lot of other people don't have is I can see. I have vision. I can see. Right. That's why I probably became such a huge right wing you know person because I could actually see what's coming down the line. Even before Nick Fuentes can see it, before Mike Cernovich can see it, before, you know, uh, the well, I now call them the fake right can see this shit. All they can see, a lot of what the fake right can see is just the next five, ten years. You know, the GOP, the Republican Party, you know, Donald Trump, and, you know, how are we going to get our lobbyist dollars? I, I'm seeing way beyond that, all right? And that shit's going to go away. Or if it doesn't go away, it's going to be held, it's going to basically be controlled and probably demonized and criminalized. By the Nick Fuentes Groiper uh, revolution, so that's why I can scale. That's why I can scale back a lot of my shit because it's it's gonna happen, all right? Um, you know, because you can only fuck someone up the ass without their consent before they get angry enough to you know punch you in the face. <laughs> and that's exactly what's gonna happen. So, um, all right, lots of luck. Uh, two by two is at sixty six to sixty eight. Uh, so because the game is gonna be on pause, I'm not gonna be too worried about what's gonna happen with four hundred four and JMC because we're just gonna do the hard. We're just gonna do the swap, right? We're gonna do uh, this coin swap. We'll keep the brand name obviously, and we'll just keep it going that way. All right. I already know the basics of this stuff. And eventually, when I do get all that money, well, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hire people and make a game. Of course, I'll still want to work on my side project, which will be a simple tower defense game. I do want to create some sort of base building component and a skill tree. That should be doable. Because all it's going to do is just going to have fancy graphics, which I have the icons for. And just keep pushing the button. You know, you use your in-game currency, and it'll be single player, so I don't have to worry about multiplayer. And it'll just simply add stats. That That's it. Uh, that's that. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's not too hard for me to create a bunch of bulls and if statements. All right? Bull is Boolean, uh, which is... Uh, true or false zeros and ones you, you don't need to know the details all right but it, it's simple enough and then basically i just create like a hundred of those things you know, for different skills like you know uh yeah so anyway um oh yeah i already did two by two so in the meantime i think i'll be fine and then um yeah i'll just release it everywhere and then i'll actually see what it's like to actually release a game on these platforms, Steam, Android, and they do a marketing budget just so I can learn how this shit work, like the work, how it works. Uh, but I mean, who knows if I even will get that far, right? Because it's really just about learning, right? I can always just come up with other shit later. Um, but yeah. But anyway, I'm still I'm still trying to figure out what um, what because I know I want to go in the direction of some kind of investing in entertainment company. So and what I want doesn't exist. So that's why I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm creating. Uh, and then something I'll scale. So I'm sure there is something there. Uh, yeah. Compound coins at 5,100 to 8,000. Satoshi's of a dog coin. So pretty nice. In fact, it looks like someone literally just bought a bunch right now. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Don't care. Uh, bull run, yeah, that's fine. We already know that. Okay, we don't care about that. Trump fifty one. See, this is what's so annoying. People, uh, like, 
Like, the Liberals really did have a chance to convince me that they were capable. Not all, but most. You know, Liberals were capable of doing something right. And they just don't. They're just frothing at the mouth yelling at Trump, even though the Democrats got fucked by Bernie Sanders. Uh, they got fucked by the World Health Organization, because all that matters is Donald Trump bad. It's like, this is just ridiculous, you know? And again, when this is all over... I really do actually think voting rights are going to change in America after all this is said and done. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to um, how that's that's how that's going to pan out though what it's going to really look like. Uh, but there's definitely going to be def some kind of restriction on voting. You know, at minimum a soft restriction on voting. But I'm thinking actual hard like you know X Y Z group cannot vote. Period. You know, if you have you know or you know maybe they'll say like. Hey, if you're, uh, hmm. if your sexual orientation is not a program, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to avoid specifically the words, but you know, I'm trying to tell you as much as I can about getting banned. Like, if your sexual orientation is a certain way, or you believe marriage a certain way, you're not allowed to vote. Yeah, because again, America is going to become a right-wing Christian nation. Uh, how and how formalized that becomes will determine. How strict the law is going to become. So it'll be kind of interesting to see. But I can't, even I can't see that far yet. But that's because that's so far out. So, you know, for now, I'm just going to wait and see what Nick Fuentes and the Gropers will do uh, when coronavirus is lifted. All right. So, but anyway, it's like, this is just ridiculous. It's like, whatever, man. All right. But either way, the Democrats and the liberals definitely deserve to lose all their power. You know, now what's interesting is what about the conservatives? The fake conservatives definitely deserve to lose all their power. And uh, that's what's uh, currently going on. All right, so let's get to the meat of this. 21, 22 minutes, okay. Uh, hold on, let me clear my bit heroes. On August 21st, 1994, excuse me, they posted a bulletin board on Usenet which read that they were looking for extremely talented C, C++ Unix developers who had an experience in designing building large complex systems in one third the time that most people take. Uh, wow. They're asking for a lot. I think he means that their first employee, yeah, let's, let me make this bigger. Their first employee, their, their foremost employee, oh, their foremost employee was Shell Captain. Uh, who some also consider as a co-founder of Amazon. Later that fall, they hired Paul Davis, a programmer who was a staff member at the University of Washington's Computer Science and Engineering Department. Yeah, so Jeff Bezos went really ham here. All three of them started working on Spark, station in the garage of Jeff's, Jeff Bezos' house uh, at Seattle. They say it's a garage, so that's what this is. The first engineers of Amazon coded in C since HTML was barely a decade old in languages like JavaScript and Ajax were years away. Right, because this thing didn't even exist then, so they had to literally use C. While Cap Fan and Davis work on primitive beta website, uh, Bezos would attend courses in book selling to learn how to select inventory and manage it. Huh. He also started to hire other employees, so this is the part that I'd be interested in. Now I do know how to sell, and I definitely know how to market to a certain degree. I don't know how to do like an advertising budget because I haven't done it, but it's pretty simple. Just have a lot of money, figure out who your audience is, and just target them. And if your product is good, they'll love it. If your product sucks, well, you know, you just lost a lot of money. And that's all that it is. There's there's no fancy secret to marketing or advertising, right? Even Final Fantasy Final. Final Fantasy VII Remake, which I love. I don't. I, I know why people hate it now, but I think it's a stupid reason um, to hate it. It's like, I, I was deceived. I thought we were going to get a remaster, but you call it a remake. Like, people are literally just fucking retarded, right? Yeah, but of course, it's video games, so a lot of liberals are going to be, like, stupid. Right? And there's, there's, they, just, they just don't know how to be grateful. It's like, this it's the, the, I love the remake. It's amazing. I think it's great that it's actually a sequel. Right. But I mean, yeah, I guess Sony, no, Square Enix does deserve a little bit of blame for being a little deceptive with the marketing. It's literally just one word. They should just call, just call it like some kind of sequel. Whatever, man. 
But anyway, even they have to do advertising too, right? They did advertising with Butterfinger Crunch, right? See the stupid ads for that. I, you know, they did advertising on Twitch. They still even do advertising, let the word out, right? But because the product is more or less good, right? Don't listen to all the haters on the internet. You know, Square Enix is going to make a lot of money off of it. That's all. That's all that it is. There's, there's no secret to it. Well, Kappa and Davis were work at print. Oh, I already read that. The book, The Everything Story by Brad So, clearly depicts that Bezos had hired people from starting of Kadabra Inc., which is now Amazon, to write the codes and develop the website. And along with them, he would code too. But compar comparatively to others, he devoted more of his time in other works like paperwork, arranging the things which are required, attending courses, hiring people, etc., than developing the website. He means then, not then. Okay. Uh, so this is this is actually me. This is the the guy who does all this shit is me. This is and I happen to like doing these because I really don't like fucking coding. So no, Jeff Bezos did not develop the Amazon website on his own. Yeah, there, there, yeah, because there's no scale. Plus, you have to do a bunch of other stuff. The source of the above mentioned information is from the book The Everything Store by Brad Stone, and that's this book right here for ten for nine dollars and fifty four cents uh image source my phone so i think he has an oh so he actually has um the thing uh the program and noise issue a lot of people think you need to drop out college record terrible job to start a business he was already successful yeah i was already a failure and then i became successful thanks to cryptocurrency and this is kind of see i'm going i'm actually both I'm both a college, oh, yeah, technically I'm a college dropout. I, I actually need to take one more course at Baruch College and then I'll be a graduate. But college at this point is a waste. Like, it literally is just a waste of everything. Uh, uh, but I also became successful at crypto. So I'm, I'm like literally the everything guy, right? Jeff Bezos is the everything store. I'm the everything guy. So if I play my cards, I should be more powerful than Jeff Bezos uh, when all is said and done. Uh, in question mark years, will I regret not doing this? No, don't bother. Yes, do it. Yeah. I mean, as much as I don't like all the stuff that I've spent a lot of money on this past year just to learn and then just drop the project, right? I'm still limiting my money output too. So it's, I'm not, I, I'm not like, I, I think I maybe lost 500 bucks buying a bunch of software and whatever's assets, which will still be useful to me. Don't get me wrong. Right? I'm just not I'm just not really using it as much, which is fine because it's a learning experience. Five hundred bucks is way cheaper than like what the twenty two thousand dollars in college debt that I still have, which I'm paying off using the minimum thing because I don't give a shit. <laughs> you should be paying the minimum on your student loan debt, by the way, because you because the interest rate is so low. So it's actually better just to pay the minimum. Yeah, because you need the cash flow now. Um, so yeah, which do you think is a better bargain for me? All right, I'd rather have spent the five hundred fucking dollars than getting my worthless ass college shit. He had a well-paid job and a stable career in New York City when he became obsessed with the idea for Amazon. After Jeff told his boss he wanted to quit so he could start a business, they went for a long walk around Central Park for two hours. Jeff's boss agreed that Amazon sounded like a good idea. The only problem was his boss thought that it would be a better idea for someone who didn't already have a great career. Jeff was already successful, so even he failed, he had a backup plan. It was that regret you know, that they gave Jeff the push to take the... Where did he get this info? This does sound kind of interesting and right. Let me see, did he... Ah, yeah, so he did actually... Yeah, see, this guy's referencing the same book, this one. Um, okay. Screw your competitions, customer... Okay, Jeff, oh, sorry, if you want to be successful, you have to please the customer uh that is true yeah because i don't really care because when it comes to cryptocurrency i don't view it all in any of these as competition all right it's just is, the, is your is your product good in this case the product is cryptocurrency is it good bitcoin is good litecoin is good these scam coins that i call a scam is obviously good for something that's why a lot of idiots buy it all right i don't buy it but other people do all right you know who am i and then you know all this other shit right it's all about the product right you know steam is where it's at because you know uh justin sun and all the people they're not putting out a good product right it's decent right that's why i'm that's why i'm invested in it but it could be so much more right but the product is being held back not because of these other cryptos but it's being held back because of what they're doing themselves like their product is a problem 
right? They could, they could, you know, I mean, unfortunately, Steve Jobs isn't alive anymore, so he can't grace us with his uh, 200 IQ product uh, vision, right? Because that's, because when you look at old interviews of Steve Jobs, right? I definitely did. What, what, what's the word that he always likes to talk about? Creativity, art, and product. And then after that, the customer. He didn't really say anything about competition, unless he was talking about Bill Gates at a certain point. Because that's because you know Bill Gates stabbed Steve Jobs in the back, and then they eventually buried the hatchet. So, um, yeah. But if you're more interested in like the backstabbing, go watch uh, Pirates of Silicon Valley. I think that's the movie. Great. Yeah, that's a good movie. And and this a great scene where Bill Gates and Steve Jobs are yelling at each other, and then Bill Gates is like, "You know what, Steve?" you're you're not something like you're not different from me right you're angry okay this is what the, this is what it's about there was a house that you and i robbed the name of that house was uh xerox right and you're angry that i came in and stole from the same house after you did the same thing all of this, Steve, and then he's like pointing to like the stage, like it's like back of the stage. He meant to basically say it's meaningless, but he's like, Ugh. and then he just walks off. Obviously, I'm butchering that great scene a lot, but uh, if you're really interested, that, it's a good movie to watch. Um, anyway, yeah, well, I'm not worry about having competition. Jeff knows that if you win the customer, there is no competition. He said that a company's most important intellectual property is its brand. Well, that could be a problem for me. <laughs> But Jeff's guys, he ensured Amazon kept its brand image by providing quality service, fast shipping, convenience for Amazon customers. Jeff created Amazon so that it aligned perfectly with human wants. Everyone who wants who buys online wants the process to be as easy as possible, and they want their order to be as arrive as fast as possible. That's why I buy all my shit off of Amazon. It's actually kind of funny. Before we move on, like I definitely know that a lot of people on the right uh, are really angry at China right now. But, I mean, they're all swarming TikTok, which is ma apparently made by China. TikTok made by China. Let me see. It's got to just get a... Is a Chinese video sharing social network service owned by ByteDance, Beijing-based company, and 20... Yeah. See, so everyone's bashing China, but you're still using their China's products. So, are you really boycotting China? I guess that's technically a good thing, because then they'll just be uh maybe slightly less yeah that'll be actually the interesting thing what's going to happen when everyone just starts going so crazy on the anti-china rhetoric that all of a sudden china just decides to shut everybody down in america but that's probably not going to go too well because i think they kind of did something like that with blizzard and their bull and that whole bullshit free speech thing uh there was one silver lining to it which was actually pretty big it's like oh yeah it lets china know that Hey, you can't censor us. We Americans will censor ourselves. So that's essentially what it is. Uh, so it's uh, going to be uh, interesting. But uh, you know, with that being said, uh, we'll see uh, how things pan out with China. As long as Americans can continue to create, and you know, we cut off immigration, I think we'll be fine uh, for the time being. Uh, I refill this. So, see, this is how it all uh, ties in together. It's actually pretty cool. Many companies... Oh, yeah, I read that. With Jeff's guidance, he ensured Amazon kept its brand image by providing quality, fast, blah, blah, blah. Jeff created Amazon, so they aligned perfectly human... Uh, oh, yeah, I read that. Jeff knew that the internet was going to be revolutionary, even though many people didn't see it at the time, and that it had massive potential. He knew where the world was heading... And he wanted to invest in the future, which is basically where you and I are at now with cryptocurrency. The problem is, I don't feel like I can... There's so much crap out there. What can I really do? His background in Wall Street and tech industry also gave him an edge when it came to understanding business and trends. For example, Jeff started by selling books. He also knew that no physical store would be able to carry a complete range of books. It was too difficult to maintain that much inventory. An online store, however, could do this very easily. I forgot what it's called, but yeah, like you put an order and then you just call up like a manufacturer and then let's put it there. Uh, there's a there's a simple process to it. It's like on demand processing or on demand manufacturing. I forgot uh, Michael Dell, the guy who made Dell computers, was the was like the best at doing that. Um, <clears throat> and I think he founded the company Texas Instruments. 
uh, or TI. I always think of them as the TI-85 calculators because we always have to use those uh, in junior high school and high school, right? and you really have to use those. I also liked it too because people made games for it and we used to play drug wars in chemistry class. But most of my chemistry class consisted of black people, so we would, we would all be playing that shit. It was also black people because the high school, the Brooklyn Tech High School football team was there too. So, yeah, but we were all pretty cool. They were actually pretty nice people, uh, surprisingly. Like you know, that's actually one of the few times that like um, jocks were actually pretty friendly to me. It was actually the non-jocks, the non-football people that were pieces of shit to me. Even in the beginning, uh, Jeff, the vision from the start, knew that Amazon was going to be an everything store. He, start, he, he may have started selling books, but he had bigger long-term plans. Having a vision when you start gives your business direction. When you try to do everything in the beginning, it's easy to fail. You spread yourself too thin. Yeah, that's exactly where I find myself in, especially coding. So that's why I'm stepping back. That's why Jeff wanted a master selling books online before you add on his second or third character. Or yeah, make sure you take care of... Well, in his case, he wants, in Jeff's case, he wants to be a master of all trades, which he, which he is. That's what I want to be. Uh, and I have that capability, but again, the problem is there's only one of me and there's only one, and there's only 24 hours in a day, right? Two, two thirds of which I have access to. So, uh, let's see. Um, a lot of businesses try to milk their profits in the short term and have no vision for the long term. Yeah, that, that's that's what most video game developers are. Uh, Jeff made sure that Amazon was definitely he still encourages long term investments, even though they don't bring a main return. Not afraid to take massive risks. Just so they had uh, Amazon things didn't always work out for Jeff. When they did, they were hugely successful. Well, I don't know about this, but I don't know. I don't really consider anything a failure. So that's how I that's how I cope with it. Amazon Prime, pretty good, office stream, fascinating, air streaming. Jeff knew that people were willing to pay for convenience and that recurring revenue from Prime is a great way to fund innovation and growth. Yeah, um, monthly cash flow and yearly cash flow, because I bought Amazon Prime yearly because it's cheaper. Like, this cash flow is really important. You don't have cash flow, then you don't have, you don't have any cash in the bank to pay you know, your expenses. Jeff said, nine times 10, you're going to fail, but every once in a while, you'll hit a home run. But in business terms, it's more like a thousand runs. Well, maybe business prefer to play it safe. Jeff pushes the boundary there, and then runs turn into So I wouldn't call this a risk. Um, I would just say I would just call it more like t trying new things, which is technically a risk. All right, so I'm definitely gonna buy this book. Um, I mean, I don't know because I don't know if I'm gonna read this. Well, let's see. Uh, English teacher. Wow, Jack Ma was an English teacher. And he founded Alibaba, the largest internet company in the world, or the second largest. Uh, so he's literally, so he's actually the Chinese version of Jeff Bezos, it looks like. Okay. Uh, okay, Rockefeller, of his age, has become a kind of in private sector. As a face of the new consumers, China. Uh, Great job, Clark draws on his first thing. He figures that he don't get explorers vital. How such a did Jack Ma build Alibaba? Well, this is pretty easy, right? Jesus Christ was a simple carpenter, but obviously he's the son of God, right? Technically, we're all children of God, so we all have greatness if that's what we really want. Most people don't actually want that. Well, which is fine, right? But, you know, uh, just don't expect too much more, right? You know, if you want great results in life, you're going to have to do great things, right? And that involves doing crazy, risky shit, right? In my case, um, you know, you could actually minimize the risk while still technically taking a risk because you have to try new things because you don't know if it's going to work. It's a scientific method, right? Either, either it'll work, it doesn't work, or maybe it's something in between. It's usually something in between. Well, explains his really nice drive and his ability to outsmart his identity with a cocktail about his tail. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll read this book, but I'm much more interested in what Jeff Bezos did. Because he's also much more in line with what I'm doing, which is entertainment and shit. You know, um, <clears throat> okay. Oh. Was there could be a book say why the corporate culture of secrecy has never been done? Jeff Bezos stands out as a really big leaning out cloud computing and transfer. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I don't care about the editorial. I want to see what the people are doing. Excuse me. 
As somebody who has been filming Amazon since they began, tech in Seattle is a small world. Amazon has always been in my peripheral, so I'm somewhat with, their, with Amazon, especially in this city. As well as what a lot of people have had to say about it. This book only really scratches the surface of the mindset of Jeff and his executive team. But if you can really read between the lines, why do people hate Amazon so much in Seattle? You'd be pretty re real idea of how Amazon is running their philosophy behind it. Like other people mentioned, this book paints Jeff in a little bit of a strange light, but only focus on his ruthless approach to business. You can a little time to talk about how he indeed is human, as a white man, actually is a Darth Vader incarnate. Well, I don't care if he's Darth Vader incarnate. He's a fucking billionaire. He, he's the world's richest man, or second richest man, depending on the time of day during this week, right? I don't. If I had that much money, I wouldn't really care either. Right? Especially if the entire city full of shitlids in Seattle don't like me. You know, it's like, you know. see, they're all kind of liberal-ish, and they still don't like Jeff Bezos. It's like, he's like, how ungrateful are you? Oh, but we love, well, we love Starbucks. We love Star. I just can't stand these some of these people. All in all, I enjoyed the book thoroughly. The pacing is quick, not thin, and the author spends just enough time to treat it for kind of risking crafting a dense editorial. Like we're swept, but not aloof at progression right makes it easy to continue reading. Okay, so it's an easy read. Good. I like it. Alright, so this guy sounds like an asshole and a loser. So let's see. Let's, let's, let's see into this guy. I've been fascinated by Amazon and Jeff Bezos since I heard about them in 94. Uh, and I've closely followed them since. When I launched, when I helped launch CircuitCity.com in 99, Amazon was one of the sites that I used for inspiration on a daily basis. I just read this book. I learned a lot. Oh yeah, and Circuit City is now bankrupt. I learned a lot from that. I always found the backstory. You know, of course, I have to take a single blah, blah, blah. We humans tend to be myopic, subjective, one sided You are know, good, and I don't think the author actually interviewed Mr. Basil. So it's like soon as we better all. I don't think it's going as, as either or for it. It's very hard to learn. Don't limit yourself to this book. All right, I probably remember books written by Mackenzie Bezos and Andy Jassy. I already get the sense this guy's a loser. One really interesting about was the story about Jeff having an open CME by a customer. Okay, so this guy wrote, gave it three stars, but he's not really being. See, this is the kind of like loser beta male f word shit that I don't like. Like, there's there's something really wrong with this guy, and I'm not surprised that he helped found Circuit City, which then went bankrupt, right? Because whatever's causing him to write this crap and do. First of all, this doesn't read like a three-star review. This reads more like a four-star review, or maybe even five. But he still gave it a th what? There's clearly something wrong with this guy, and you know it shows up in his results in life. You know, I mean, he probably has a lot of money, so he probably doesn't care. But that's not going to be helpful to you or me. Uh, frugality is one of my mantras too. I, it's hard to find follow on Amazon. Amazon has been so successful. So why did you give it a three out? Of, why did you give it such a shitty review then? Uh, okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, I think we've read enough. All right, so I'm going to go buy this book offline after I close this video uh, recording. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I'm, 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 there's not much more I can say because I have to do the research, right? See what, you know, you get rich in your spare time. This is what I'm doing. It. This is what I really do in my spare time. Sure, I try new things. I do my coding. I try, I don't even remember the other shit I was doing. I was doing website work. But I mean, in the end, you know, if I want to become, because whatever it is I'm creating doesn't exist right now. It might exist in the future, and if it does, only a couple people in the world will literally do it, all right? Jack Ma became the everything store, but he's mostly focused on just, you know, doing retail. And obviously that's worked for him. Jeff Bezos literally wants to do literally everything. In my case... What am I going to do? do? Um, video games, for sure. Entertainment, for sure. Real estate. Commercial real estate, for sure. Those three things. Uh, I don't really like retail, so I don't really care about that. So there's... De um, de and then, of course, cryptocurrency, right? Everything has to be online for me. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to really do a lot more research and then think on it. And then probably play more Escape from Tarkov. <laughs> you know? So now that I'm going to be scaling back my coding a little bit... Um, you know, take a little bit of break and then go back and then watch some bracket. He has a bracket has a tutorial about a tower defense game, so I could probably create something like that uh, pretty easily. It's only like twenty minutes. It should be very simple. And then, uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, if you like what you saw, read or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button from wherever you're watching this from, or on my YouTube at youtube.com forward slash JMC Radio. 
Make sure you smash that subscribe button on the right hand side of this page so that we can uh, continue growing this channel. And at this point, I don't even really care about growing this channel. Um, also, I want to thank, because I actually got a couple new subscribers. Oh, shit, that's actually a lot. Uh, well, thank you to three new people that subscribed, so um, I don't even know where they came from, but yeah, well, welcome, welcome. Uh, so for the most part, I don't really care about growing the channel that much, because again, you know, if Jeff Bezos started his own YouTube channel right now, you know, how many subscribers do you think he would get in one day, all right? You know, so that's, it's like the old Stephen Covey thing, right? PC versus P, production capacity versus production. Right now, I need to focus more on my production capacity, all right? You know, I think I've done enough production focus. Now I can go back to what I really like doing, which is production capacity. So even though I did one video a week, what if I was like, you know, worth a hundred million dollars and I was written about everywhere? I bet a lot of you would probably subscribe to the channel at that point. It's like, oh, I'm doing more with less, right? Leverage, scale, right? It's all about scale at this point. So, you know, because again, why do I care, right? I'm, my bed's been made. You know, I'm gonna have an even better bed in a couple of years, you know? So I don't die from coronavirus, all right? So, yeah, so it's gonna be kind of nice. It's gonna be kind of nice. So, you know, take advantage of what I'm giving you now because it may or may not be always there. Well, it'll probably always be there, but you really just, be I mean, why would you make your life any harder than it already is? You know, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather have some, a resource like myself, you know, 10, 20 years ago, just be a straight shooter and tell me everything I need to know right up front. But most people don't. So, I, I don't know why that is, but I guess we'll. Figure it out later. Anyway, see you all tomorrow's video. Again, this, today was a little different. Uh, I wanted to just, you know, do more of the scaling stuff because that's what matters. Because uh, we had scale, then one day JMC 404 2x2 even would be somewhere up here, right? So, uh, and it can be if that's what we really want. I mean, I, I might as well, yeah. But anyway, just so, there's a lot I have to like figure out. So we'll see. Things will be subject to change, of course, but some things will. See you all in tomorrow's videos. Obviously, everything's fine in the market, so just stay safe, stay healthy. You know, don't go crazy, right? And eventually, the shutdown will just be a memory. Uh, that always, is. like every other tragedy in the past. But I will never forget, and you will never forget. And yes, there will be some kind of retaliation at some point. Judson Chan, JMC Coin, a 404 Coin. Uh, we're gonna actually make this the focus. So yeah, this is a pretty decent thing. Uh, winner of the 2013 Financial Times Goldman Sachs Business Book of the Year Award. I was not placed one of the first and largest bets on the internet. Nothing would ever be the same again. Well, I'm placing everything I have into crypto, right? I turned $500 into six figures, which I will reveal once I become a, I'll probably reveal it after I've secured my first commercial real estate property. So I'll probably be at least a couple of years from now. And then I'll tell you, no, that's, that's more than enough time. Maybe even before then, right? Yeah, I'll probably wait till I have my commercial product. Because even if I make, even if Bitcoin goes goes up to a million to two million and I cash out, you know, I still, money's technically in my bank account. It's not secured just yet. It's secured once I have my commercial property. So yeah, anyway, see you all in tomorrow's video. Think about what I said. Big things are happening and uh, I'm gonna take advantage. So hopefully all of you do too.